Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kristana. If you are new here, please hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell and you'll get all the latest videos that I put out. Remember, everything I use is always in the description below. So if you hit that little see more tab, I think it's see more. I don't, it's different on the mobile and different on the, the desktop. So it, there's a little tab that will pull down the description and it's kind of a description of the video, everything I use. You can find all my other social medias, all that stuff. So. And if you are not new here, welcome back friends and family. I just want to take a second to say thank you to everyone who's watching this video. To those of you who keep coming back week after week and video after video, I just want to say I appreciate you. So I just want to take time to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so today in our video, I am going to be doing this buffet. And so this buffet is something that I have actually Oops. This buffet is actually something that I have had for probably about over a year. And I just didn't know what I wanted to do with it. And then earlier this year, if you guys don't know, I bought a house. We bought a house that we had saved years for and it's in Maine. So my husband is from Maine, okay? And so I have family in Maine and I have family in Massachusetts and New England. And that is why we're going back. So my husband is active duty military. He is about to hit his 20 year mark. So around this time next year, we will probably be back in the US. Right now we live in Germany. So I'm trying to collect as many awesome European pieces as I can. So I'll do customs and then I'll do pieces for myself as well. And because we already own the house, we're renting it out right now, but we already own the house. And so I can visualize where I want this stuff. And of course my house is gonna be super colorful. So the house was built in 1760, but has been renovated. And so it's, it's not modern, it's not a new build, but it's not an old build, it's kind of just in the middle. So it's what it is to me, I feel like it's like a blank palette. So that way I have the it's like a blank palette for me to bring color and bring my color into the house so i am going to be doing this piece and i i don't want to say where i'm going to put it because i feel like i will change my mind i do all the time i literally repaint pieces of furniture like every year every two years because i just get sick of it but that's the beauty of paint is that you can repaint them especially when you know what's on the surface you know how to repaint it prep it for repaint Make it a cute so, little statement piece it's not a huge buffet so it's it's i don't know probably four let's look let's measure it everything's okay <laughs> all right so this is about 56 and a half inches long so it's about, it's just over four and a half feet. So what is that in, in the States we do feet and inches. So it's about four and a half feet, a little over four and a half feet long, which is not super huge and it's not very tall. It's kind of, it's a little bit short. So it's about two and a half, yeah. It's about two and a half inches or two and a half feet tall. So it's not a very big piece. It's gonna be a cute little statement piece. I don't know, maybe for the entry? Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> this piece had some veneer that was coming off, so I took a putty knife, a metal putty knife, and I just removed it. This was an easy piece to take the veneer off of. So I took that off and then you'll see later on, I'm going to sand that back splash back part down so that I can reveal the natural wood underneath it. And then it will get sealed the same way that the top will get sealed later on. Also, next what I did is I removed all of the hardware. I always take all of the hardware off of every single piece every so often you'll see me paint it but it's very rare i also am going to replace these little keyhole locks i just don't like these covers so i replace them later on with something a little bit smaller that i felt fit the piece i'm going to go in with a two-part wood filler to fix a few chunks missing out of the drawers so first this two-part wood filler 
it, I'm going to stir it. And then there is a hardener that usually comes with the, well, it always comes with the two part wood filler. And you're gonna mix those into each other, but you're gonna want to work fairly fast because it does harden within about 10 minutes. Minwax has a two part wood filler. Bondo has a wood filler. It's called multi-purpose or they have car Bondo. Whatever you can get your hands on when it comes to this two part filler here is what you're gonna to wanna to use on huge holes or gouges like this on the corner of the drawer. A regular wood filler is not going to hold up to opening and closing these drawers and this hardens super hard. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to put my two part wood filler on the areas that need to be fixed with a tongue depressor and I'm gonna overfill them. So once they dry, they're gonna dry super hard. I'm going to go in with my sander and I'm going to shape those corners the way that they need to be shaped. So don't worry about putting it on super nice right now because we're gonna sand this off once it dries. I like to let my wood filler sit for about an hour before I go in and sand it, just so I know that it's nice and hard. I'm using my three by four electric ray and I'm using a 120 grit sandpaper. So that's what you wanna do about a 120 grit to go in and sand and shape this. You don't wanna use too high of a grit because it won't sand it, but you don't want too low because you don't want it to eat through it really fast. So 120 is like a sweet spot and you're gonna go in and you're just gonna slowly start shaping this. Don't go in crazy with it, be patient, go in and be careful. Like this piece right here had some moldings on the drawer front, so I had to work around that, but I'm just shaping this so that that corner is fixed and it looks like a corner once I paint it. Remember I removed the veneer from the back splash back part of this piece. So I'm gonna go in with a 120 grit and I'm going to sand it. I know that this is solid wood. A lot of times under veneer, it's a particle board or plywood, but this was solid wood. And so I want this to be part of the piece. I could have taken it off, but I just, I like it. And so I sanded it completely down with a 120 grit because when people put veneer on stuff, there's a glue and things like that. So we needed to get that off of the piece. So you can see right here that there's the residual glue, but I'm just gonna go in with my three by four electric ray and I'm going to sand it down with a 120 grit and it's gonna show that beautiful wood grain. And then after I'm done with this, we are going to strip the top so that way I can refinish it and just show that beautiful wood grain on the top. Top of this piece is veneer, and so I'm going to show you how I strip veneer to be able to refinish it so you can see the wood grain. The first thing I'm gonna do is go in with my chemical stripper, and I'm gonna put a thick layer of chemical stripper on this. Now, I know a lot of you ask me which one I use, but I live in Germany, so what I can get, depending on where you're at, may not be the same as what you can get, so 
you have to kind of just try different stuff. Let us know in the comments below what you like to use and where you're located. And maybe we can help everyone find an awesome stripper because there's a lot of stuff that's been changing over the years. And so I know that this one's awesome, but I'm going to miss it when I go back to the U S so let me know in the comments below what you guys like to use. You can see right here how it's starting to kind of alligator skin up, crackle. That means that it is starting to work and it's starting to strip that surface off. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to strip the pre-existing finish off, whether it was so whatever sealer that they used, whether it's like a shellac or a poly or whatever. And so I'm trying to get that off first and then we will sand it down. But this is what I like to use for veneer because you have to be so careful when you're doing veneer. I never go in and just sand veneer off. So I'm going to, I let my stripper sit for about 20, 25 minutes, depends. And I'm gonna go in with my plastic scraper that you guys know I love. I love this scraper because it kind of, picks up it scoops up the stuff i just love this scraper okay so i am going to scrape all of the stripper off and then what i'm going to do is i am going to apply another coat of stripper just so that i can make sure i get all of the existing finish off if you guys saw my last video i showed you guys how to check to see this did only have stain and a sealer on it. It didn't have paint and then stain and a sealer on it. So I was able to see that I got the whole finish off, but I'm going to go in with another layer of stripper and I'm going to take a 3M scrubbing pad and I'm actually going to scrub the top of it first before I go in with my plastic scraper again. And this allows me to get the sides and this allows me to scrub off any pre-existing finish that's on here. You can use a very fine steel wool as well, but I have been really digging these 3M scrubby pads. So that's what I'm gonna be using. And then once I'm done scrubbing it, I will scrape off the residual with my plastic scraper. I forgot to show you guys, well, I didn't forget. I thought I was recording and I wasn't. I like to go in and neutralize this after this part with a mineral spirit. So I'm going to pour the mineral spirits on there and kind of scrub it off with another 3M pad. And that helps the stripper neutralize and it makes sure that it cleans off any residual. So I am really sorry I didn't show that part. I thought it was recording and it wasn't. So that is what I did after this. I allow the mineral spirits to dry completely and then I'm gonna go in with a 120 grit. I do not do anything lower than a 120 grit because I've already taken the finish off. I am going to sand it with the grain, with my 120 grit. And what this is gonna do is it's going to help get any residual off and it's gonna help take off some of that old stain. So that way I can really have the natural color of this beautiful veneer on here. Once I'm done sanding with my 120 grit, I'm going to take my dusting brush and I'm gonna dust everything completely off. That way I can kind of assess where it's at and that way I can have a clean work area so that I can look at it. I am gonna go in with a 220 grit and I'm gonna repeat this process just so I can really smooth it all out and make sure that I do have all that pre-existing finish off. And then I will go in with my dusting brush again and dust it completely off. Now it is time to clean this piece. I like to use Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner. It's a TSP based cleaner. And what I do is I pour it into warm water and I use a microfiber cloth and I go over the entire piece. And then after I'm done with the cleaner, I will put clean water and use a clean rag in a 
bucket and then I'll go over it again. You want to get that residual off so it doesn't create any adhesion issues, but this is a really great cleaner and I always, always clean my pieces. I won't scuff sand this piece because it's not glossy, so it doesn't require it for a chalk mineral type paint. So I'm going to go in after it's completely dry and I'm going to lay down a base coat of Plum Crazy by Dixie Belle. I want a base coat for this piece before I go in and start blending and doing my artistic finish. I just wanted to show you a little hack. I put tape on my drawer sides so that way when I'm painting, I can just pull that tape right off and I have nice crisp lines. So I don't want you to pay attention to the piece when we start blending it, okay? I started blending it different colors and I didn't like it. So what we're going to do is we're gonna pretend like that's not on there. <laughs> You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. I am going to blend a custom color. This is Plum Crazy with a little bit of Dixie Belle's Amethyst in here. And the reason why I did this is because I'm going to be blending with Plum Crazy and Peony and I want some shading. And so this darker color that I am creating is going to be my shaded effect, the color that creates my shaded effect. And so I need, I went in with aubergine earlier and it was just too dark. So this is going to be my shading color. Peony is going to be my highlighting color. And then the plum crazy is going to be my in-between. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about when I start teaching you how to blend. But basically what you do is I, I feel like I didn't really measure here, but it's about a one part of Plum Crazy and a half a part of Amethyst. So if you had like one cup of Plum Crazy, you'd have half a cup of Amethyst to get that color. Now, that's what the color looks like. See, I told you that I had blended on this piece before. Pretend like that's not there. So we're gonna use Plum Crazy. We're gonna use our mixed color. We're gonna use peony. You need a brush for each color, and then you need a clean, dry, neutral brush, which is what brings it all together. And then you need a mister bottle to create moisture. And then I have a microfiber cloth that I use to wipe off the excess paint. So I'm gonna mist the area first, and then I'm going to lay down some more Plum Crazy, okay? So we're going to put Plum Crazy pretty much all the way on this door, except for on the outside, because that's where my shading is gonna be. Once I have finished putting my Plum Crazy down, I'm going to mist the area, and I'm going to put Peony in the center so that we can create a highlight. So we're gonna put it in the center and I'm going to kind of go, I'm gonna go horizontal, I'm gonna go vertical, and I'm going to attempt to blend it into that Plum Crazy while I am applying it on there. So you can always blend the colors into the other wet colors when you're applying them. I'm going to wipe off my brush and this is the peony brush still, and I'm going to go vertical, and I'm trying to kind of blend it a little bit. Now, I'm gonna go back in with my Plum Crazy brush, and I'm gonna add some Plum Crazy, and I'm going to go where that transition line is between the peony and the Plum Crazy, and I am just using a light hand to blend these together. And I'm gonna go vertical, you'll see me go horizontal, and what I'm doing is I'm just working on this center section first. So I'm working in sections because this is a door front this is what you'll do for the sides of your pieces as well you work in sections so I'm gonna mist it I am going to take the darker color that I'd mixed and I'm going to outline the outside of this door with that color
Once I'm done outlining it, I'm going to mist it again and I'm gonna still take that same brush and I'm going to start feathering it into that Plum Crazy. So the Plum Crazy is still wet, that peony is still wet. So I'm trying to blend these colors into each other while everything is still wet. And that's why you wanna have a mister bottle because it makes it a lot easier for you to blend colors into each other when there's moisture. And so I'm going to mist this again. You don't wanna over, you don't wanna to put too much water, but just enough that they blend together. So now I'm taking my Plum Crazy and I'm going to blend that down into that darker purple color. And so I'm going to the transition line of the darker purple and the Plum Crazy, and we're just kind of feathering and blending that into each other. Now it's time for the clean dry neutral brush. So we're gonna mist this and I'm going to go over the entire front to get everything to feather and soften together. Now remember when I'm dipping my paintbrush into the actual paint when I'm mixing these colors or blending these colors together, you don't need a lot of paint. So you just need to dip your brush in there and wipe all the excess off. So I want you to know that when you're blending, you don't wanna be adding more and more paint. So now we're doing the clean dry neutral brush. I'm going in circles. I'm gonna wipe it off in between to get any of that excess off. And I'm just feathering it. So you're using a light hand when you do this. You can go vertical, horizontal, diagonal. I'm gonna mist it when it starts catching. So when your clean dry neutral brush starts catching, that means that you need more moisture. So just put a little bit more moisture on there. And I always have my my mister bottle about a foot back from the piece so that I'm not getting sopping wet. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna work on the shading. So I'm gonna mist the area around the door, so the border of the door, and we're gonna add some more of that dark paint on there, okay? So what we're doing is we're trying to make sure that this door is nice and shaded and that dark color really shows. So I'm going to add more paint around it, but I'm not gonna use a lot. I'm just dipping my brush in there, wiping all the excess off and just going around the outside of this door. I'm gonna mist it again and I'm gonna take my neutral brush, my clean dry neutral brush that I've been using and I'm going to try to feather and do circles and horizontal to blend that darker paint that I just added on there into the inside of the drawer. So here it is on a drawer front. I'm doing the same exact thing. I sped it up for you, but you'll do the same exact thing. You add your plum crazy, you outline it with a darker color, you highlight it in the center with the peony, and then you take your clean dry neutral brush and you just blend everything together. The smaller areas are a lot easier to blend. It's those bigger drawer fronts and sides that are a little bit more difficult. And so that's why I wanted to show you in slow motion, the actual door. So when you're trying to blend your sides, that's the same concept as what I just showed you in real time. Once my piece is entirely dry, I'm gonna lay it on its back because what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this two inch high density foam roller, little roller, it's so cute. And I'm gonna use gator hide. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a ghost stencil, something I kind of dubbed a long time ago. And I'm gonna use Dixie Bell's Royal Damask stencil. And I only want certain parts of this stencil. So I'm gonna tape off the other ones that I don't want. And I'm just gonna keep reusing that same design that you're gonna see on here. So I'm taping that off and I'm making sure, the reason why I put it on its back is so that this can lay flat that way because I'm gonna be using gator hide and I've done it with gloss before. So it's a little bit thinner than a paint and so I don't want it to run and that's why I laid my piece on its back. And I'm gonna take this little roller and I'm going to lightly go over the area that I want stenciled and I'm gonna pull the stencil up. And you're gonna see, I'm gonna wait till that's dry and then I'm gonna place it in another area and I'm taping off that area that I don't want to be stenciled and I'm going to go over it again with the roller. So I put the gator hide on it and then I try to roll off as much excess as I can before I go over the actual stencil with the roller. So you're gonna see right here, I'm gonna roll over it and then I'm gonna pull it off right away. I am finished placing my stencil all over my piece and it's completely dry. So now I'm going to seal my piece with easy peasy spray wax. 
So I'm going to put the easy peasy spray wax, spray it and rub it in with a microfiber cloth. So this is going to seal my entire piece, but I'm also doing this because I am going to go in with a dark wax and this is going to allow my dark wax to be removed a little bit easier. So not only am I sealing the piece right now, but I'm also using this as my benefit for later on when I do the dark wax. So right now I'm going to go in with Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in black and I'm going to use their La Petite brush and I'm going to use this as another shadowing effect. So another shading effect. So I'm going around the edges of the drawer fronts. I'll also do this on the doors and all the recessed areas. And I'm using this to really just deepen that purple color. I'm not going to keep the black on here like this. So you're going to see, I'm going to apply it generously around the edges, make sure I get in those little areas where there's trim. So that way it can be left behind when I wipe it away. It just adds character. I'm going to take a microfiber cloth and I'm going to wipe it away immediately. So that way I can get the excess off, but it still adds a nice deep shaded color and anything that I want. If I want more of that black wax off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that easy peasy spray wax and I'm going to spray it in the areas that I want even more of the wax taken off. And that will help me erase even more of the wax. I am going to seal the top of this piece with Dixie Belle's Gator Hide. So if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I use tin foil to outline or to line my little pan. I'm going to take a tacked cloth, which is sticky. It's going to get all the excess dust off of this before I go in with my Gator Hide, which is a poly. And I'm going to pour the Gator Hide into my tray once I'm done doing this. And I'm going to use a high density foam roller to apply this. Now, in my last video, I worded it a little bit wrong. I said, if you start in one direction, don't go in the other direction. What I meant was you can go up and down in the same direction, but if you start vertically, do not go horizontal. So if you're going to go forward, you can go backward, but you can't go forward and back and then side to side. You'll see those strokes or you'll see that and it's going to look awful. So stay with the grain, okay, back and forth from left to right. If you start left to right, do not go top to bottom. Also stay in one linear direction. Does that make sense? Did I say it right? 
I'm not sure. Hopefully I didn't confuse you guys again. So I'm going to roll this on. There is no stain on this. This is the natural color of the veneer. And so I'm going to seal the entire top with this and that little backsplash. I wasn't sure if I was going to paint it or seal it. That's why it's taped off, but I did end up sealing that back part. And so it's all going to be the wood color after this, but I'm going to put this on here and I'm going to allow it to dry for a few hours. And then I'm going to go in and do a second coat. But if, before I do that, I'm going to do a little scuff sand with a high grit sandpaper. So right here I'm doing super fine surf prep brad pad and I'm just gonna scuff it really quick. And then I'm gonna wipe it off with a dry microfiber cloth and then I'm gonna go over it with a tacked cloth again just to get all the excess off. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to apply one more coat of the gator hide on it. To tie everything together, I'm gonna to use gilding wax in the color copper. And I'm gonna take my little makeup brush and I'm going to go over the hardware. This is an oil-based wax, so it's self-sealing. It does take about 30 days to cure. And so if you do put it on hardware, just be cognizant of that. It does dry after a few days, but it takes that full time to cure. So try not to overuse your hardware if you're using it on there. And then I'm gonna go over all of the details and add some copper wax. And this is just going to finalize this entire piece. And I hope you guys really love it because I love it. Okay, everybody, so this, okay, everybody, so this piece is done. This video is done. Thank you so much for watching. Again, remember, everything I use is in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, thank you so much. Have an amazing weekend. Happy creating, and I will see you guys next week. What did you shout it? <laughs> There's the piece. Stop. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> There it is. Oh, it's so blurry. Wait a minute. What? Well, wait a minute. Roxanne, go back there and stand there. Go back and stand there. Okay, there we go. Okay. Oh, wait, no, no. No, stand back there. Just get crouched down so they can actually see the piece. Ugh. Oh, see, look, my little helpers. Anyways, there's the piece right there. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> You're such a fragile thing, I know And with the winter comes the ice, the snow But I'm here at all And oh my love Don't worry about the cold just yet the trees haven't started to shed Just feel the summer sun As it warms our bed I'm lying And I'm lying When I say I'm trying.